How's it going ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kaz and you better get down on your knees and thank god because today I'm showing you how to combine the features from my external tutorials into a single external cheat. I've gotten this request so many times that I've begun losing IQ points and in my misery I'm here to help you. The basic concept that allows one to make a multi-hack is something known as multi-threading. Multi-threading your application basically allows you to run multiple functions at once in parallel. This means that you can run your menu in one thread while your hacks run in the background at the same time. Now, you might think that this is going to require a computer science degree to make work, but it is actually quite the opposite. Multi-threading in C++ is pretty simple, and don't worry, I'll be here to hold your hand through it anyway. But before this video gets boring, if you'd like to support me and what I do, feel absolutely free to check out my Patreon down below for all the source code used in my videos, including this one. I also have a Discord server if you need any help or just want to come hang out. And finally, it doesn't hurt to drop a like and subscribe if you do enjoy the video. With all of that out the way, let's get into it. Alright, so to get started, we're going to use my borderless IMGUI window project that I made a couple videos ago as a base. Now, the reason we're using this is because it's basically a fully working uh, external IMGUI pop-up window and um, it, it works. So we're going to go ahead and click on this green code button and download zip. Of course, I'll have the link to this in the description below. Taking a look at my downloads folder, we have the code over here. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to go ahead and fuck you WinRAR. I'm going to go ahead and drag it into my desktop. If you've done everything correctly so far, you should be able to open the folder and find the SLN file. And we're going to go ahead and double click on that to open it up in Visual Studio. Now you should see something like this in Visual Studio. The first thing we're going to do is come to the top here and we're going to change from debug to release. And we are going to change from x64 to x86. Clicking this arrow over here will show us all of the stuff inside of our project. And what we're interested in is this cheat folder. GUI.h and GUI.cpp are what we code in my external IMGUI menu video. Um, and in main.cpp, CPP, as you see here, we just basically initialize it. We render it until we close the application. And when we close it, we then destroy everything. So pretty simple. All right, so now we're going to need to add a new file over here. And that is going to be memory.h because we are going to be adding cheats to this uh, project, right? So, and the code for memory.h is also going to be found in the description below. It's going to be from my pro bhop repository, memory.h. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click raw. I'm then going to click control plus a to select everything. Thing. We're going to copy and then we are going to paste. Now, if you have the project set up correctly, once again, you shouldn't have any errors here and this should work uh, perfectly. But essentially, this class is uh, a class I made lots of videos ago and it's just a simple memory manipulation class. It lets us open handles, get module addresses, and of course, it lets us read and write process memory. Before we get on to actually making the hacks, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new file over here. It's going to be a header file also, and we're going to call this globals. Now, the reason we need this is because we are going to have separate threads, right? Um, and to access things from separate threads, we are going to need global variables. And we're going to need variables that both threads can access. And this is going to hold our offsets. This is also going to hold our like toggles that we're going to make in the menu. So let's get started with that. I'm going to begin by making a namespace. I'm going to call it globals. I'm also going to make another namespace and I'm going to call that offsets. Of course, you can always just import uh, your offsets from Haze Dumper, but I'm going to do it manually. Now, these are going to be the offsets that we are going to be using in this specific video because we're going to combine Glow and Radar with the menu. And obviously, you will need more offsets if you want to add Chams or Triggerbot or anything like that. If you don't know how to get offsets, uh, the third link in the description will take you over here to csgo.hpp in Haze Dumper. And what you need to do is then search for whichever offset you want and grab the latest one. Of course, that requires you to know what they are and what they do. And uh, if you want to look at how to code other features, go ahead and check out my other videos. I have a whole playlist on a bunch of external cheat tutorials. Now, the first thing we're going to add to this globals namespace is going to be the address of client, right? We're going to make a variable to store this. And the reason we do this is because you don't need to get the address of client uh, over and over and over again. Uh, you actually only need it once uh, because the modules do not change once the game is open and therefore their, their addresses do not change. So we can do that like so. We're going to make an inline std un pointer underscore t and we're going to call this client address. And we're just going to set it to zero. Uh, we're going to initialize it to zero. Now, the reason we use inline over here is because essentially we're going to be including this variable in a whole bunch of different files. We're going to be using it all over the place. And uh, you need to make it inline, which is essentially equivalent to static in this context. And that essentially just means that it is defined in this file uh, once and then it is used throughout the program. 
All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and make the variable that is going to determine whether or not we want our glow hack to run. That's going to be pretty simple. Once again, it's going to be an inline and this time it's going to be a bool and we're going to call it glow and we're going to set it to false by default. So by default, it is going to be false. Glow is not going to be on. Now we are going to actually want to add a color picker to this so that we can change the color of our glow hack. So to do that, we're going to go inline uh, float and we're going to make an array but first we need to call it glow color and you don't need to give a size because that'll it'll figure it out for you and we're going to make it red by default so 0 0 and 1.f now the reason we are doing this in this way with a float array is because that is what IMGUI takes. Uh, you're kind of screwed, you don't have any other option, you have to sort of bend to what IMGUI wants. And what IMGUI color pickers want is they want an array of either three or four floats. And of course this is R, G, B, alpha. And if you'll notice, these only go from zero to one. Um, and that is because they are percentages, right? One is basically the max value for the RGB, which will be 255. So this is equivalent to 255, zero, zero, and 255. The next thing and the last thing we're going to do just for the sake of simplicity is we're going to add a checkbox for our radar hack. So bool radar and once again we're going to set that to false. All right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to gui.cpp and we are going to add those variables uh, into our menu. So I'm going to come over here under all these includes and I'm going to go ahead and include globals.h. Over here in uh, void GUI render, this is where you make your menu. This is what you decide is going to be shown. We need to show two checkboxes and a color picker. We can get rid of this button, although you should subscribe. And we're going to go I'm GUI checkbox. We're going to call it glow. And as you can see, it takes the it takes a bull pointer. So we're going to say the address of globals because that's the namespace that our variable is in and globals glow. What this is going to do is every time you check the checkbox, it is basically going to turn glow on or turn glow off. And then we're going to use the glow variable uh, in our hack thread to determine whether or not we should glow. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, next we're going to want to add our color picker. So I'm GUI um, color edit and we're going to use color edit four. Basically color edit three means that it takes only RGB. So three floats, but color edit four uses RGB and A, right? An alpha value. Value. And of course we want that because it's glow and we want to be able to change the alpha. We're going to call this glow color. As you can see, this takes a float color of size four. So a, a float array uh, of four. So remember, we've already made that. It's going to be globals glow color. And there we go. And the last thing we need to do is make our checkbox for our radar hack. So we're going to call that radar. And once again, we're going to pass in the address of globals radar. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and build just so that I can show you what we've done. All right, my build was successful and taking a look inside of uh, the folder that we dragged to my desktop. If we go into release, you will see chat menu.exe if we run this. As you can see, we have glow, we have radar, you can toggle these on and off and you have a color picker over here and you can choose colors, you can change the alpha right over here. So that's all working pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this for now. What we're gonna do next is we are going to initialize our memory class. And uh, this is very important because we're gonna need the memory class to actually make the hacks that we want. So making the memory class is pretty simple, but before we do that, we are going to need to include a couple things here. First of all, we're going to need to include memory.h. And next we're going to need to include um, globals. I remember because in globals, we have this client address value over here that we're going to set. So once you have memory included and globals included, I'm in uh, main, by the way, this is the main function that's getting called. Uh, and by the way, if you aren't familiar with multi-threading or threading in general, this is a thread. This is a thread that uh, the operating system makes. This is where your code starts. So this is its own thread. So this means that uh, the GUI, anything that's running inside of this while loop is in its own thread. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a new thread, which is going to run at the same time as this while loop that's going to run our hacks. And obviously it's going to check whether or not these variables are true or false. And based on that, it will do the hacks. So we can make our memory class like so. We're going to go memory, we're going to call it mem, and we are going to call the constructor passing in csgo.exe. Now, once again, if you don't know how this memory class works, uh, I made it in my very first video on uh, B -hop, uh, on making a bhop script, but uh, essentially it's gonna loop through your processes, it's gonna find uh, csgo.exe, and uh, it's then gonna open a handle to it, which will allow us to do lots of fun stuff. Now, you should also check if this doesn't work or if it does work, because if csgo is not open, this isn't gonna work, and then your hacks aren't gonna work, but uh, I'll leave that to you to figure out. Once you have created your memory class, um, we're going to go ahead and go globals, client address is equal to mem dot 
and get module address. And the module that we're going to be using in this video is going to be client DLL. But if you are doing something like Chams or Triggerbot or Aimbot, you probably will also need engine.dll. Just do the same thing, except make a new variable over here, uh, make a new variable called engine address or whatever you want to call it and get the address. Now, once again, the reason we're doing this is so that we're getting it once and we're storing the value in this globals namespace, right? We don't need it in a while loop, getting it over and over and over again. We only need this once. Okay, so now we are getting to basically the most important part of this video, and that's going to be the actual hack thread that we're going to create. So just for the sake of, um, you know, being neat, I'm going to go ahead and create two new files here. The first one's going to be hacks.h and the second one is going to be hacks.cpp. So we create a source file and we call it hacks.cpp. Now in hacks.h, the first thing we're going to be including uh, is going to be the memory class, the memory header file. And next, we're going to go ahead and create a namespace. We're going to call it hacks. Now, the, the reason we're separating this shit all into namespaces is once again, just for the sake of being neat and orderly. You can do this however you want. The purpose of this video is just to show you how to accomplish this. But anyway, we're going to make a function definition in here and we're going to call it void visuals thread run visual. And uh, basically what's very important here is we're going to pass it a, a very, very important parameter. Now, if we come over here to main.cpp, as you can see, we initialized memory over here. It is a local variable inside win main, right? And um, essentially this memory class that I made is not meant to be uh, instantiated more than once. It's a singleton. It's supposed to be made once. And the reason for that is because essentially it, uh, it opens a handle over here and it doesn't close the handle until the destruction is called. So that means that if you are making a whole lot of these uh, passes, you're basically opening up a million handles and they're only going to get closed when it goes out of scope. And that's just, you don't need that. You only need one handle to perform read and write process memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, something called a reference. And I will show you how to do that in literally two seconds. So we have void visuals thread, no except. Obviously it's green over here because we have not defined it yet. But what we're going to take is a const memory, right? Memory is this type of uh, is this type of class. And we're going to take the address of operator. And in this context, it's a reference. So we are taking a reference. So we're not creating a new variable of type memory. Instead, we are getting the address of memory. And we're going to call this mem. So if this doesn't make sense to you, um, well, you need to learn some more C++, but essentially we are taking the address of memory. And obviously uh, coming back to main over here, we're going to pass in this variable to that function, right? And that means that it's actually going to get the address of this variable. And we will be able to use this exact variable that we made in win main over inside of our hack thread. Let's go ahead and copy this. And we're going to come to hacks.cpp. I'm going to go ahead and include um, hacks.h so that we can define this. We're going to add our brackets and very important in front of this uh, name over here, we need to add hacks namespace just to make it clear that we are in fact defining this function inside the hacks namespace. Now we're going to need to include a couple of things over here. So the first thing we're going to include, we're going to include GUI.h and I'll show you why in just a second. And the next thing we're going to include, of course, is going to be globals.h because nowhere in, uh, in are we including globals. Memory.h does not include globals and um, neither does GUI.h. So we are including globals so that we can access those variables that we made earlier inside of this thread. Now, I said that I explained why we're including GUI.h. And the reason we're doing that is because the way I coded this is essentially there's this bool in this namespace called is running. Um, and this will be true while essentially your menu needs to be shown. So when you click the little X, when you run the program, when you when you decide to close the program, this becomes false. And this is very important because what we're going to be doing is we're going to run our thread as long as that bool is true. True. And we can do that pretty simply with if GUI is running, I'm actually stupid while sorry, while GUI is running. So this means that while this variable is true, we are going to continue running this while loop. And remember, we're going to create this thread once and we have this while loop in here that is basically going to run until you close the program. So we're going to make a thread and then uh, this, this is going to run forever, basically, until you close the program. And speaking of that, we can actually make this thread now. So coming back to main.cpp, back to main.cpp, we're going to go ahead and replace this uh, include memory.h with hacks.h. The reason we are replacing memory.h is because if you look in hacks, we already include memory.h. So we just want hacks.h. And now what we can do is we can actually create the thread and I will show you exactly how to do that. Creating a thread is uh, literally a line of code and it is std thread. Of course, make sure that you have a uh, thread included and we're going to go ahead and add the brackets. And what we are going to do is we're going to pass the address of the function that we want the 
thread to run. So remember the function that we just made for our hack is actually in, uh, it's over here in this hacks namespace and it's called visuals thread. So if you're paying attention there, I said we are passing in the address of the function. That's very important. So hacks visuals thread. If you know anything about functions in C++ to call a function, you actually need parentheses, right? But as I said, we don't want to call this function. We want to pass in the address of the function and that is what we do. But now if you notice, I've added a comma here and that is because this function takes a parameter, remember, and that parameter is going to be this object that we made, this variable. So just mem like this. And if you look, no errors, everything's good, but there is one more thing we need to add and that is gonna be a dot detach. Now, the reason we do this is because STD thread is essentially a class in the standard library that wraps uh, the Windows API create thread. And when you make an STD thread, it basically tracks a lot of data, right? It saves a whole bunch of shit that we aren't interested in uh, within this class. And when we call detach, what it does is it basically detaches, it detaches the thread that is running from this object because we are not gonna be using this object. If you wanted different threads and you wanted to synchronize them and you wanted to know when threads ended or started, then obviously, you would not want to detach. But in our case, we are going to detach because in WinMain over here, we want nothing to do with this thread. We just want this thread to run. And uh, with that out the way, essentially when we run our program, it's gonna get uh, the address of stuff, save it in this memory object, it's going to save our client address. And then we're going to run the visuals thread passing in this object that we created. And from there, it's going to, to then sit in this loop, running our menu, you know, having, a, having the time of its life. Meanwhile, if we look at this function, this is gonna be running. This while loop is going to be running. Uh, it is going to run until you decide to close the program. And because of that, we should actually do something here. We should sleep this just a little bit so that it doesn't absolutely uh, destroy any performance you might have thought you had. So include thread. And we are going to go ahead and uh, this thread sleep for std chrono milliseconds and just one millisecond. All right, cool. And now we can actually get on to making our hacks. Now, this isn't exactly a hack coding tutorial. If you want to see how to make glow, go watch my video. And if you want to see for with a better explanation how to make radar, go ahead and watch my video. But uh, now we are just going to use what we have made so far. So first things first, we're going to want to get our local player. So const auto local player is going to be equal to mem.read. Remember, we can uh, we can use this memory class that we made in, uh, we can use the memory object that we made in main. We can use it in this completely separate part of our program because we passed in the address uh, we're passing by reference. So yeah, we're gonna read an std uint pointer underscore t and we're going to read globals plus client address, uh, globals client address plus offsets and that's gonna be dw local player. And this of course is going to get us a local player if it is valid. And that's uh, very important because if it is not valid, so exclamation mark local player, we're going to go ahead and continue, continue. Next, we're going to go ahead and get our glow object manager. So const auto glow manager is going to be equal to, and it's going to be the same as this line above, just like so, uh, except it's going to be DW glow object manager. And once again, if exclamation mark glow manager, we're going to go ahead and continue. Next, we're going to go ahead and get our local players team. So const auto local team, that's going to be equal to mem.read. And we're going to be reading an std in 32. And uh, what we're going to be reading is local player, so local player plus offsets m underscore i team number. And now we can get onto our entity uh, list loop. So looping through entities is as simple as four. Auto i is equal to one. While i is smaller than or equal to 32, we're going to go ahead and increment i. We can then get uh, the player like so. Const auto player is going to be equal to mem three again. And it's going to be very similar to this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this line, except it's going to be client address plus offsets dw entity list times, oh, sorry, plus i times 0x, I'm being stupid, 0x10. Uh, once again, not exactly a hack coding tutorial. If you wanna know more about this, go ahead and watch my video on making Glow ESP. But uh, this is how you loop through the entities and this is the size of the entity. So we're getting the entity list of offset plus the index of the for loop times the size of uh, basically the, the interval between entities. And of course, you won't always be in a game with 32 entities, so player will be invalid sometimes. So if exclamation mark player, go ahead and continue. So skip if the player is not valid. Next, we need to get the team of this player. So const auto team is going to be equal to um, mem.read. And what we're going to read is once again, an std int 32 underscore t. And we're going to be reading player plus offsets. 
and that is going to be uh, I team num. And then we can add our check if team is equal to local team, right? Because we've already got our local players team before the for loop. The reason we did it before the for loop is because we don't want to be getting this, you know, every iteration of the for loop. That's useless. All we need to do is get our local players team once. Yeah. So if the teams are equal, continue because we don't exactly want to glow our teammates. If you do want to glow your teammates, then obviously uh, say if team is equal to local team and then add the block and then do whatever you want in there and else you should know how to do that. Next, we want to check if uh, this player is alive. So we can do that like so. We're going to get the life state. So const auto life state is going to be equal to mem.read. Once again, we're going to be reading uh, uh, player plus m underscore m underscore life state. And then if life state is not equal to zero, we're going to go ahead and continue because uh, life state zero is uh, it just means that you're alive. So if they aren't alive, we're going to go ahead and skip them. Now, finally, we get to the meaty part. We can now do our Glow ESP, and I'm going to show you how to make Glow ESP with a checkbox and how to use the colors from the global variable that we made. Remember, we have this uh, we have this Glow color variable that's going to change as we change the color, and obviously, what we want our Glow to respond to that. So, basically, if this code gets to this point, we have a, an entity that is alive, that is not on our team, uh, that is a player, you know, and we have our Glow manager, we have our local player, everything like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say if Glow glow. So if globals glow is true, if you toggled it on inside of your menu, we are going to now do a lot of fun stuff. First of all, we're going to go ahead and get our glow index. So const auto glow index is going to be equal to mem.read. Once again, we're going to be reading an in 32 from player plus something. So I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to be this. Oops, wrong. I don't know what I just did. Ignore that, please. Do not clip that. So we're going to be uh, mem.read an in32 player, but we're going to read m underscore i glow index. Once again, because we want the glow index, we're going to be doing glow. Glow index is going to be the index of this entity's glow object inside of the glow manager, which is basically a list of glow objects. So uh, you're an idiot if you think I'm typing all of this out with you. Basically subscribe to my Patreon so that you don't have to. That's a joke, by the way. Um, we're going to write to our Glow Manager plus Glow Index. Remember, as I said, this is the index of um, the entity that we want, Glow Object, inside of the list of Glow Objects, which is called the Glow Manager. And we're timesing by 0x38 just because that is the size of an object in the Glow Manager. Very similar to what we did over here uh, with the entity objects, except this is different. These are Glow Objects. And then we are adding the offset 0 x8 and that is because this is the offset to the color red and as you can see uh, we are then using our globals glow color remember this is an array and if you look the first index of the array is actually our red second index is green third is blue and uh, sorry it starts at zero so zero one two three so the third will be our, our alpha and if you look this corresponds so red green blue and last but not least uh, we have our alpha over here so yeah, this is how you will make glow. And every time it writes the glow, it's going to write the most updated color inside of our glow color array, which once again, we can change through our menu. This is the importance of global variables. And this is uh, how a thread works. So yeah, we're going to be accessing this global variable from multiple threads. Our main thread over here is going to be in GUI render is going to be writing to this glow color and our hacks.cpp. This thread is going to be reading the color. It's not going to be modifying it. And then uh, these two are are just uh, this is render when included and this is render when not included. It's just you just need it like this. I'm not going to explain why I explained it in my other video So go watch my glow video once again. Now the other feature that I said we we're going to add in uh, this video is going to be radar hack. So we're going to come down here and say if globals radar. No, not client address radar. And if globals.radar, it's pretty simple. We're going to mem.write. And what we're going to write, the address is going to be um, player plus offsets m underscore i glow index. And what we're going to write is true. Sorry, not glow index. I was not thinking the m underscore i b spotted. We're going to write true because it's a Boolean. I mustn't forget our semicolons. Now, this is another concept that I want you to understand. Usually, if you didn't know what you were doing, you would basically have two separate entity lists, right? You'd be looping over the entity list twice to do glow and then to do radar. But if you look what I've just shown you here, we have a single entity list. We are only looping through the entity list once. We are checking what we want. And it just so 
happens that both Glow and Radar want players who are alive and who are enemies. And then what we can do is we can basically do both these features in a single thread in a single entity list loop, which is obviously way more efficient than looping through the whole entity list twice and doing all of these checks twice. And the biggest thing is I want you to sort of have that mindset when going into doing this by yourself, you know, because uh, you sort of want to think about optimizations that you can make and you don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again. Like, for example, we are not, um, we're only initializing memory once and we are passing it by reference. We are only getting the address of client once, you know, and we're storing it in a global variable instead of calling get module address every single iteration of the loop. But anyway, I'll stop rambling now and let's go ahead and build and see if this works. Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch CSGO and, uh, you know, we're going to find out very quickly if this works or not. All right. So I'm going to join a bot match quickly and I will catch you guys in there. Let's go Mirage because it's best map. All right, cool. So uh, as you can see, my build succeeded. I'm in game in the background. We're going to go ahead and uh, we need to open this. So I'm going to right click and uh, sorry, I never do this. Where's it? Open folder in file explorer. We're going to go to release. And if we run cheat menu.exe and minimize all this stuff, if we turn on glow and radar, theoretically speaking, <laughs> let's hope it works. Oh, as we can see, they are glowing. Oh, fuck. My bad. And if we go ahead and change the glow color here, let's make them green. Let's change the alpha a little bit. Let's go find it. And there he is. He's green. So so as you can see, it's not flickering. It also updates um, as you change the color. So that guy's now blue. He's somewhere here. There he is running around innocent little bot. And we also have radar hack. If we look at the radar, you can see him over there, even though I cannot see him. So when he is glowing, you can see him and he bot bull just got fucked by a uh, copium dot huffer. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that just about wraps up my video. I really hope you enjoyed. And uh, as I said, this video has been requested so many times. And the biggest thing about this is to sort of convey the ideas that you need to make a functional, decent multi hack. You are going to need to create multiple threads. You're going to need to think about the features and what you can combine into a single thread. In uh, in this video, I showed you how to um, combine Glow and uh, Radar with a menu in the same thread. But if you're going to make Aimbot, you should probably put Aimbot in its own separate thread. And uh, another important thing is basically making this thread, you know, stay alive, because if this function, remember, it's a void function, if this function ends at any point, you the, the thread ends, you need to create a new thread. So what we are doing is we are making it run infinitely until you close the menu. So this thread is always going to be running, it's always going to be trying to find local player, it's always going to be sleeping, but it's only going to do the hacks if you actually um, turn on the features. So anyway, remember, if you want the source code to this video, check out my Patreon down below. And uh, if you want to come hang out in my discord server uh the link will be down in the description join us come hang out send me a message and anyway i'll check you guys in the next one cheers and uh and peace out love you guys oh yeah and subscribe